Over the last few years, bamboo has become more and more popular to be used as a screen in people's gardens. But if you're not careful, it can become invasive and cause you major problems down the line. So today, I'm going to show you how to plant it so it doesn't take over your garden, how to split it so you get more for your money, and also how to dig holes for it in a way that you've probably not seen before to help you save time and effort. Probably. The problem with most types of bamboo is just under the surface they have runners. Now these runners go out in all directions looking for food and water. And Before you know it, they've gone under the fence, they've gone into areas you don't want the bamboo to grow in, and it's growing like crazy and it's completely out of control. Now one way of solving that problem is just to keep them in pots. But like this one, that has been in a pot for a couple of years now, I don't know if it comes across on camera, but it's not particularly green. It's used all the nutrients in the pot. And really, for this to be nice and green, we're in, we're in May now in spring, it should be thriving, it really isn't. For this to be thriving, it needs to be in the ground where you've got more nutrients and water as well. So one way of putting it in the ground and making sure you keep it under control so it doesn't spread everywhere is by using a plastic that contains these runners, which is exactly what I've got here. Although this one is actually called a bamboo root control system, which is strange because it's not the roots we're worried about, it's the runners or the rhizomes. And all it is, is a very thick plastic. This must be about a millimetre thick. And you sink this into the ground around the perimeter of where you want the bamboo to grow. And it contains the bamboo. I bought this at a local garden centre per metre, but you can buy it off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. It's around about eight to ten pounds per linear metre. So when the rhizome ends up hitting the plastic, it's too thick so it can't go through it. Then it's only got two ways to go, either up, which isn't a problem, or down and underneath. But these rhizomes only really grow to three or four hundred millimetres from the surface, and this is two, four, six, this is seven hundred millimetres deep. So it can't get underneath it and start growing where you don't want it to. So I need to sink this in the ground before I put my bamboo in. What I want to do with planting my bamboo is rather than just plant one or two tubs, I really want it to turn into a hedge. So I want it sort of long and thin. So one way of doing that is to dig out a hole, a bit like the size of a bath tub, but I think that's really going to be quite a lot of work. So I'm going to try something different. Soon I'm going to be putting in a post and rail fence here, perpendicular to my existing fence, but for now the bamboo can go in first. I mark out two lines around half a metre apart to show me the perimeter, and then the ends around about two metres apart. If you ever use spray paint like this, always remember to clear the nozzle with the can pointed upwards when you're finished with it, which means it won't be blocked with dried paint the next time you try to use it. I'm trying to keep this excavated material as close to the hole as possible, because most of it will be coming back in within a couple of hours. So my strategy here is to dig a trench around the perimeter rather than excavate the whole lot. Digging and moving soil manually is one of the hardest and most tiring jobs around the garden. So if you can do anything to cut down on the amount you actually move, then it pays dividends. So what I'm doing is equivalent to stitch drilling, where rather than making one hole, you make so many that they all join up, and then allows me to get the plastic in vertically. I'm storing this soil right next to where I'm digging because it's going to be coming back in. However, this side is just a bit too far away to throw it over, so I use a very short run with a wheelbarrow.
As I get down to level, I mark with insulation tape 650 millimeters on my tools, which gives me a quick rough guide on how deep I'm going. Now that is about the first side complete, not the first half, just the first side. That's about two meters long by 650 deep. I want the plastic just sticking up a little bit just to make sure the rhizomes don't get over the side and into the garden. Just a couple of pieces of advice, and you would have heard this before from me. If you're going to do anything like this in your garden or put in a fence or a post, I would highly recommend these two pieces of equipment, the classic fence post digger, fence hole digger, and a narrow shovel with a long handle. These have been invaluable to me for the last couple of years. I would highly recommend the Roughneck Make. They're not the cheapest, but they still look brand new and I've had these for two years. If I, if I lost these today, I would just buy exactly the same again. I'll put the link in the description below. The other piece of advice is whenever you dig any ground or any material out the ground, it bulks up. So if you dig a bucket of material, once you've got it out, you've got at least a bucket and a half or two. Or if you dig a metre of material, a cubic metre, you'll end up with one and a half to two cubic metres. So just this little stretch here, I've ended up with a massive mound of topsoil that will obviously fit back in here if I compacted it in. And what that means is, before you start anything like this, have a think about where you're going to put the material. You're going to end up with a lot more than you think before you bring it back in and compact the plastic in here. So that's half an hour to do that. So I've probably got another hour left. Whenever you're doing a job like this, which takes a few hours, I think it's important that you work at a pace that's sustainable and you can keep up. There's no point in hitting it really hard for 10 minutes, only to have to then take a 30 minute rest. You need to get into some sort of routine and just accept it's going to take time. You know, this whole job would be a lot easier if you had a mini digger. <sighs> It's not long before I have a complete perimeter dug to depth so I can install the plastic barrier. This plastic is quite heavy duty stuff and as I undo it I realise that the person that cut it for me in the shop was very generous and gave me more than I asked for which is handy because I've got a use for this offcut on another future project. With it sitting at the right level and in the right place, I can secure it by compacting some soil against it. When you're installing this barrier, they recommend a half metre overlap. This doesn't need gluing or securing in any way, as long as the two sides are in contact with each other without any soil in between, so the rhizomes can't push through it. With the centre soil broken down, I can then bring back most of what I've already taken out and fill in any gaps around the outside of the plastic. So, that's the difficult bit done. It's up to level plus or minus an inch or so. I think I'll leave it like that until I get the bamboo in. If I have to top it up again, then I can do that. Now, planting bamboo, you have to remember bamboo is grass. So there's not much you can do to it to kill it. If you cut it and you chop it up into bits, before you know it, as long as it's got nutrition and water, it's gonna start growing again. So essentially my bamboo here, although I've only got two pots, I think out of these, I'll maybe get six or eight. So 
So rather than spending a fortune down the garden centre buying multiple pots of bamboo, it's really easy to propagate just by splitting. All you need to do is cut it vertically between the canes with an old handsaw, making sure that each section still contains rhizomes and roots connected to it. With these planted, before you know it, in time, each one will then start putting out runners and expanding again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this isn't a particularly a standard way of planting. But I own two hand trowels both of which I've seen in the last 24 hours, but haven't used. And do you think I can find them now? People think I make this stuff up. It's like deja vu from putting a fence in a couple of years ago. I can't believe it. I think once you pass 50, something must happen. I stagger the plant in slightly to fill in the area the best I can and in time this will give me a really nice screen between my garden and my working stroke dumping area next to my workshop. You, I'm afraid, are going in the wrong direction. You're gone. That is dead. That one is dead. And so are you. I hope pruning them a little bit will help stimulate a bit of growth. That's what Alan Titchmarsh tells me anyway. If he's wrong, I'm going to be giving him a call. So that, I think, is a good job done. I think they've got the opportunity to flourish in this area. And with that plastic in place, I don't think I've got any worries of them actually taking over the garden, either now or in a few years' time. I've left the plastic high because I've still got some work to do in this area and I'm not 100% sure where the final level is going to be. So once I am, I can just trim it off with a pair of scissors. So really happy with that. This is the first of many jobs in this area, which is the jungle garden. So really happy to get a start. And I think that is gonna flourish. Hope you enjoyed this video and you've maybe learned a thing or two along the way. I will see you next time. <laughs>